everybody. Uh, first, let's get the obvious out of the way. Why am I wearing England? They already eliminated that I retire all the shirts uh, once teams are eliminated. Well, technically they're eliminated from contention for the World Cup, but they're still playing. And since this is the intro video to my preview for the third place game, I thought it's appropriate. Uh, also, it's if you watched my video from yesterday, it's my new England jersey that I was hoping to get in time for the game. Uh, semi-final didn't happen, but it's my new jersey and I actually like it very, very, very much. Having said all that, um, let's look into my uh, preview. The one with the facts and the numbers of the third place game between Belgium and England. The game will be played in St. Petersburg on July 14th. It's actually Bastille Day where no French team will be playing and it is 5 o'clock Moscow time, 4 o'clock Central European um, which also means that it's to, um, at noon on the East Coast. Let's get into it. Current form, well, both teams' current form took a dip, especially for Belgium since they lost, where they were favored by my model. Didn't lose by much, but that's always will make uh, for a poor rating. Uh, England's, they got the draw after extra time, so it's a little bit higher here. So I have Belgium coming in at 73%, I have England at 67%. Belgium was higher because up until the semi-final they've won every single game where uh, England lost to Belgium and also had a draw against Colombia. And you see actually the games between Colombia and Croatia got very very similar ratings uh, overall. So current form is maybe a little bit more for Belgium, although the most recent game was better for England. Now accolades for those two teams, uh, well they are not the most uh, highly touted World Cup teams overall but they have a record. We have England winning it all in 1966 so that's obviously the biggie but we have that Belgium finished fourth in 86, England yeah was also fourth, no third, this should be fourth place. I knew there's a mistake in there, sorry for that. So this is why a touchpad, I should get better. So fourth place in 1990 and both of them of course reached the semi-final this year. So England's uh, overall World Cup record is slightly better. In the Euros it's a little bit of a different story since um, the Belgium, Belgium reached the final in 1980 and they also had a semi-final in 1972 um, and England twice reached the semi-final in 68 and 96. And then of course uh, in 1966 the golden ball went to Bobby Charlton. Uh, the only time that an English player was clearly the best player at the World Cup. And the golden boot went to Gary Lineker and will pr probably go again uh, this year to an English man. I don't see either Griezmann or Mbappé scoring a whole lot of goals and even Belgium. I, thought, I don't know. Uh, Lukaku probably has also three or so, none of them will score a hat-trick. I think Harry Kane will win this golden boot and therefore uh, England will already have a quite good resume. Previous competitive matches, uh, yeah, there were only four and one happened this, at this year's World Cup. The first one was actually the most exciting one Oops. and that was the one um, at the 1954 World Cup. Uh, we had to play on the 4-4 draw after overtime in the group stage. It was a very, very weird um, um, tournament set up in 1954, the weirdest of all the World Cup tournaments. The game ended 3-3. Three, three. Um, I think Belgium was up 1-0, then uh, England turned around, was up 3-1. Uh, Belgium made it 3-3, three, three. Uh, England then right at the start of overtime made it 4-3, three, uh, three, but still uh, Belgium managed to equalize, I think just five minutes later and then the game stayed that way. Uh, the next one was uh, the first group stage game uh, at Euro 1980 between Belgium and England and Turin, it was a 1-1. Then um, maybe the one that most remember of this generation is the um, 
World Cup round of 16 matchup uh, between England and Belgium, where England was the group winner, Belgium was uh, won their group, Belgium was second. And it was a game where Belgium was actually favored uh, to, to win, and they had uh, more of the game, but David Platt scored a wonderful winning goal in the 119th minute. Um, was a free kick, uh, I think almost from the left side of the field towards the right, and he volleyed in, into the net. Uh, if you haven't seen that goal, go and watch it on YouTube. It's really, really a wonderful goal. Um, and then the last one was, of course, the group stage game where Belgium won. So we get an overall very even record uh, in competitive matches between those two games. And now lastly, I included finals and third place games. Just makes uh, sense overall uh, because they are the same stage. But both of them played the third place um, um, playoff. We have that Belgium, the only time they reached the semifinals before this year was in 1986, where they lost to France 2 4 in overtime. And this was a second string squad for France that uh, managed to win. France played two third place playoffs uh, in a row in 1982 and 1986 after losing both cases to Germany in the semifinals. That surely must have been deflating for the great Platini uh, version of France. Now England won the final of course against Germany in overtime 4-2, although every German fan will tell you it was a 2-2 because uh, both of the goals, the winning goal was not a goal and the one that uh, sealed the deal should also not have counted since there were people on the field, but yeah. England will always go down as the World Cup winner in 1966. Dave, I haven't seen it, of course. I was not even born then. But from what I've read and watched and so on, I still think that England was a worthy champion there. Yeah. Uh, they were the better team. And then, yeah, they won the third place playoff against Italy, where, yeah, this was a really, really exciting game. Um, I remember... Uh, Scilacci securing his golden boot there with his sixth goal from a penalty and of course Baggio scoring the winner after England equalized. Um, the game was played in Bari which for me was a kind of a weird choice for a third place game but then many third place games in the 80s were always played in kind of lesser cities which might actually be not a bad thing uh, to give them a little bit more uh, attention and give them a good game and it's, uh, if it's a small stadium it might even sell out but you know FIFA regulations on stadiums probably also play a part of that and yeah jersey matchup this time around I'm quite certain that they will play in uh, red and white although we always know that they can throw me curve curveball and say yellow here and red here but I don't see anything but red and white and a curveball was thrown at me forcing me to change this video we have Belgium actually playing in yellow and England playing in red, as was revealed yesterday. Um, yeah, doesn't look bad. We get a different matchup. I still don't quite understand it. I also have Belgium favored at 60% over England with 40% and a 28.9% chance for overtime, although I really cannot see a third place game going to overtime. The one that at the time that it happened was though with Belgium uh, but I really think that uh, they will try to get a winner because, as we said, the players perceive it as torturous. On the other side, it's usually a fun game. Let me know what you thought about this video and my last minute change to it. Uh, hit like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.